Good morning everyone, I'm Mr Clark from Waterfront UTC and I'm the construction teacher here and I teach BTEC Level 2 and Level 3. Um, today's lesson, um, as you can see from the board, is Unit 4 Construction Drawing Techniques. Um, it's based over two um, learning aims, aim A and aim B, understand the requirements to produce a construction drawing. On the left hand side here is an ex student's uh, piece of work, she was year 11, she's now in year 12 and um, this work was sent off to BTEC and sent back and deemed to be distinction work. Um, this is the work across the board that we need to fulfil um, for the year 10s and uh, it starts off with different types of drawings, drawing equipment, interpret, interpretation from drawings, features of computing aided design and then interpret um, drawings and then basically going onto the drawings and then going through and describing the drawings as a de uh, distinction piece of work. So, today's lesson. I'm going to move straight on to interpret information communicated through different drawings. As you can see on the board here, this is a floor plan, quite a basic floor plan of a downstairs. We know it's downstairs because we've got our lounge, we've got our kitchen, we've got our bottom of our garage and utility room there. Now, on every drawing that we do, um, from which the uh, year 10s have done from the very beginning, we always make sure that every drawing starts off with a title page. A title page basically consists of the project, the title, the client, what it's drawn, who's drawn, drawn it, we checked it, the date of the drawing, and the scale. The scale is the most important part. The scale is what the builder takes from the drawing. Now the person that would do these kind of drawings would be an architect, okay? and an architect and I would do this by um, CAD, rivet, or actually drawn by hand. So if we go back to the original page now. So on this drawing, our year 10s literally just, literally around about three weeks ago, just done their mock exams. Um, so I just wanted to do nothing new, just review that they understand that all of the outside of this building is our um, traditional cavity wall. The traditional cavity wall would be brick, a cavity, our insulation, our block, and then obviously with inside the wall we'd have our plasterboard that then we can either, either paint or wallpaper. Once we've done all of our outside of our, our building, we then come into our internal walls. Now, an internal wall, if it's not load bearing, and when I um, explain um, load bearing, a load bearing means that if a wall is taking a load of the ceiling above, it will always be in block. If the wall is not load bearing, and it's simply there to separate the rooms, to give you different rooms, it will only be either in metal stub work or wooden stub work. That will then be covered with plasterboard and then again either wallpapered or painted. When we do our drawings, there's always a universal size. So our outside walls will always be five millimeters and that's from there to there. And our internal walls will always be three millimeters. Whenever we're writing a word here, we always put a line there which is five millimeters again okay and then we can just write in either uppercase or lowercase never mix the two together okay so that keeps everything neat and tidy instead of just writing room okay it looks roughly right so whenever we do our drawings we always make sure that we do it this way as you can see here when we go through the drawing this sign here is a, um, is a door, okay? So as you can see there, there's two doors together, double doors, okay? This here, okay, is a window, right? So that's the drawing for a window. And as you can see, all the different windows around the drawing there. This is our stairway, and that shows how that we draw and identify a stairway within our drawing. So, the task that we need to do, we need to interpret the information from this drawing. Now, that may seem a little bit difficult, but it's quite simple. All I want you to do, literally, is explain this drawing to somebody. I always like to use an example if you're talking to a blind person that cannot see this drawing, they're sitting there and you're going to explain it to them. 
So for example, I would say um, I'm walking into my house via a porch. I go through a big door. I walk into my hallway. Directly in front of me is my stairway, to slightly to the right hand side. And then the first thing I see is to the right hand side, I see a door that leads me into my dining room. On the left hand side, I have another door that leads me directly into a single toilet. And you can see this is a toilet because it says WC, you've got a toilet and you've got a sink there. We can then say as we go further up the hallway, we turn left into our lounge. The lounge leads off into two nice double doors that would probably lead into a patio or a garden. And we have a nice south facing window as well. As we come back out, we walk into our kitchen, which is a kitchen combined diner. Now it does have um, lines across here, which can work out to be someone that might design to have a wall there, or might just leave it open. We know that this is our kitchen, because one, it says it's our kitchen, but also as well, we've got our sink there and our cooker there, which is a universal science for that. We would have learned about hatchings already, and the hatchings basically are universal, and every single hatching is exactly the same, so we would know exactly what we're doing from the drawing. You could then turn around and say from the kitchen this leads off into the utility and the utility room. And you may need to explain what a utility is because not everyone knows what a utility room is. So a utility room is where we have, we could have a washing machine, our tumble dryer, maybe a spare sink, and um, this leads off into our garden as well. You can then turn around and say you have a single garage there. Now, a couple of things that we need to keep point of is that if we decide that we want to have um, sliding doors, the sign for a sliding door is that. So, referring back to what we spoke about before with our Unit 1 exam, always refreshing our memory, always making sure that we're, we're basically tying in with two different units, is that we always remember our cavity wall, our internal wall, our doors, our windows, and basically our scales as well. From the mock exam I attended have just recently done, they had to do a uh, math question where they had to work out an area. And working out area is really important, especially for builders, they need to work out how many bricks they need, how much foundation they need to put down, how many blocks they need, how much insulation, and how many uh, members of the team they're gonna need as well. So, to recap on what, basically the lesson's about is that I need you to interpret the information from this drawing. So this is basically getting us prepared for our merit work. Now our merit work is I will give you five drawings and you need to interpret every one of them drawings. Okay, exactly here. And it's just written. So then I can then look at it and read it and then without even having a picture, okay, I would understand every part of that floor plan. So some tasks I've got for you today. Okay, so the first task is, can you write down how many windows and doors are in this drawing? Then, quite a good one this one, is the mark an X where the light switches will be in your room. Now you might think that's quite simple, okay, but what you've got to remember is, this is your door here, if you put an X there, you've got to remember that when you open your door to come into that room, okay, you've then got to shut the door, you're in a dark room, and then you've got to find your light switch. Okay, so if you remember, you might decide that you're going to put your light switch there because the door is showing that that is opening that way. So when you open the door, you've got the light from the hallway, you know where your light switch is, you turn it on straight away there. So if you remember that, you can then put how many light switches that you decide that you think you will need in the house. Then, the main part is describe in your own words what you see in this drawing. So as I've explained to you and given you a little bit of a, a demo of how you would explain and interpret this drawing. Remember what I said to you before, explain it, write it down to someone that could be blind. Okay? Next one, what drawing equipment would you need to be able to draw this floor plan? I don't just want okay, CAD or ribbon. Okay, what I want is if we're going to draw this by hand, which some of you will learn to draw by hand, what drawing equipment will you need to be able to draw this drawing by hand? Okay, and anyone that wants an extension piece of work, anyone wants to think that, that okay, this is quite simple, all this kind of work is up to a merit grade, I want to do a bit of distinction work, what you can do now, you can actually copy this drawing down to the exact scale, 
and then work on that. And that would be your distinction work. And if you wanted to take it one step from there, you could always do a drawing of your own house, whether it be the downstairs or upstairs. If you have a flat, you're only going to have one floor, um, a bungalow one floor. If you've got two or three storage, just pick one floor. And you can actually draw your own floor plan with the correct dimensions and the right scale. If you can do that, you will be looking at distinction piece of work. Any work that you do do, from one down to four, you can access this on class charts that was put on there on Monday for you, and then basically you can email to me, okay, over your piece of work. I can then put that into your folder, and then when we come back, um, hopefully um, before September, but if not in September, when we do come back, I can put that into your folder, and we'll really move on to your merit work. If you've got any kind of questions about today's lesson, or anything you need to know, don't hesitate to email me and I will reply to you straight away and answer any queries you have. Thank you very much.